In today's video, I'm going to walk through the most effective cold call script that I developed in 2022. Now for context, I am going to share some actual audio of the actual calls that I had, but also I work in a very high growth and early startup and I was selling a brand new technology that they had. So I think it's important to understand that I don't have hardly any brand recognition that I'm working with and I'm calling very, very highly technical people. So whereas there may be other industries where I know pickup rates as an example in like HR or more like CRM types of sales personnel is somewhere between maybe six to 10 percent. In IT, it is notably the hardest vertical to cold call into with pickup rates around, I think, one to 3% on average. So it's very difficult to get someone to even pick up. And I think one of the biggest things that you'll see in the call that I'm going to share is how I'm very pointed in my ask, I'm very crisp and on the ball, and I'm not salesy by doing so, but I'm immediately providing them value to see if it's even worth opening up the conversation. I sell a technology that works well with a certain type of developer. So when I see online that a company is hiring for a developer that uses the type of tools that I sell. I'm usually targeting those companies, but I'll also maybe find three or four companies at a time that are hiring for that skill set, and I'll put them all in a cadence and begin my call. So that way, regardless of the company that picks up, regardless of the individual person, I've still got that same question in mind or the same reason that I'm calling that I can give to them. One of the biggest things I see is so many SDRs, so many people making cold calls are lazy, they're not on the ball, and when they pick up, it sounds like the difference between this. Hey Blank, this is Eric Finch with Company. How have you been? And that's at least at a minimum, you get the conversation going versus the flip side, which is, hey, um, John, this is Eric with uh, company. How, how are you doing today? And I know it seems trivial. And I know if you're watching this and you're thinking about getting into sales, you're like, I wouldn't sound like that. But it's amazing how many times, whether it's you made 50 calls and someone finally picks up or you're just not really all in and kind of blocking out all other distractions when you're cold calling. So into the format of the cold call script that I use. There's a ton of different ways. And honestly, if you're in a different type of sales, like car, industrial, whatever it might be, feel free to comment below if you disagree or use a different technique altogether. But the thing that I found for me personally, uh, when I open a call, the best way to go about it is say your full name and your company, and then ask them, how have you been? And I would also say, I've seen people use, how are you? That's fine. Uh, you know, hey, do you have a minute? I'm not as big of a fan of that one, but test it and be very intentional about how you're using it. The reason that I think that that works pretty well, the how have you been, is because it kind of sounds like you've had a conversation in the past and or it's not super threatening or totally obvious like do you have a minute or did I catch you at a bad time, which I am not a fan of. At least at a minimum, maybe they're thinking like, who is this? And a lot of times I'll get that question, like who is this? And at that point, like you'll see in this clip is I go immediately into the reason that I'm calling. So let's take a listen to the call and we'll break it down after it's done. Hello. This is Eric Finch with How have you been? Uh, good, how are you? Hey, I'm good. I wanted to quickly reach out. I saw you were coaching the data and DevOps team at, and uh, we're actually hiring for three different DevOps positions. I was curious, is there a specific tool set that you're moving on to or a reason that you're increasing your hiring so much? Now, I didn't want to give too much information up front before sharing the audio, so I want to break down a few different things about that opener. As you saw, I said, how have you been? In this case, the prospect was like, okay, kind of understood what was coming in, but at a minimum, I was not super threatening. I wasn't super salesy and saying, did I catch you at a bad time? Do you have a minute? Can I get 28 seconds of your time? He was like, okay, let me at least give this guy, let me hear him out, see what he has to say, and we'll take it from there. Going back to what I mentioned earlier, I'm always seeking people at companies where they're hiring for a specific skill set of someone who typically uses a tool like the one that I'm selling. And so you'll notice in the question, even if you don't understand the specific terminology, that's okay. But notice how, again, regardless of what the question is, I'll leave that to you to determine what it is. But whether you say the reason that I'm calling or I wanted to reach out because, now I'm starting and extending that olive branch of listen, I'm here to help. If it doesn't work, no problem. We can part in the call, not a problem at all. But you see, I also, lastly, in finishing and mentioning that I saw they were hiring for that skill set, and he's also overseeing the team that is hiring for that, so he likely has a direct hand in that. I'm leaving an open-ended question at the end, so I don't give him an out to say, no, I don't need this, or yes, I need this, but I don't wanna talk right now. I'm leaving it very open-ended, but still on topic of, hey, I was just curious, what's the reason for adding so much headcount? And at a minimum, he can't say, no, I don't want that, or now's not a good time. It really doesn't give them an out when I'm structuring a question in a way that makes them talk about something that's directly relevant to them. Notice I'm not selling. I'm not saying, hey, we're an enterprise platform or we solve for people who are hiring for X. I'm just like, hey, 
I'm curious, what's the reason for the addition in the headcount? It's unusual to see such a focus on this position, right? And that's kind of implied in the way that I asked the question. So if I were to take a step back, break this down into a framework, again, the opener for me, test a few different things, see what works for you. But I like saying your full name with company. So, hey, this is Eric Finch with company. How have you been? Usually that at a minimum gets me one more line. And this is where so many people mess up is they come in and they're, they're almost so nervous about just saying, how have you been? That if someone actually wants to take the call, then they're like, uh, 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 okay, okay. So, uh, you know, and then like, they don't actually expect to get to that point. So again, the reason that in the back end I'm batching three or four companies that have the same different profile is one, I'm not gonna call 20 people in the same company and get myself blocked all in one day, but I can call with the exact same opener with three or four different target accounts that have the exact same need at a high level, which gives me the ability to use the same script but again, I'm not like abusing uh, outreach or getting, you know, pissing the company off for calling every single person on their team. And then again, once we get past that, how have you been? And we actually have them engaged. It's very important to stay calm and composed, but have a very clear reason why you're calling. Whether you want to say the reason that I'm calling or I wanted to reach out because, or hey, I'm calling because I noticed X, Y, and Z, right? Those are totally okay. Again, test. The important thing is not that this is the golden script, but you give them a very quick reason why you're calling and you ask an open-ended question that does not give them the ability to say, no, I'm not interested or hang up. And sure, hey, it's gonna happen. Some people are just gonna hang up anyway. That's the nature of sales. But again, as trivial as this seems, so many people would come in on the flip side and say, hey, John, this is Eric with company. How's it going? And they're like, hey, I'm good. How are you? And it's like, hey, the reason I'm calling is because we provide an enterprise solution for software developers building new technology. And like, who cares? You haven't even identified if they're a fit for what you're doing. So again, by stating a very clear and specific reason that I'm calling, he could, you know, by extension, he might say, hey, actually, I'm not working on that at all. So that's not really relevant to me. Good, you have just saved yourself time. But by coming in with a very specific question to IT people who hate taking sales calls anyway, at a minimum, I sound like I'm educated on the space. At a minimum, I sound like I've worked with other people in his situation before. And at a minimum, if he's for whatever reason receptive to take the call, I've now got this started in a very great direction. And I've got him talking about the reasons why they're adding headcount or talking by extension and maybe second order effect of adding headcount is there's a brand new initiative at the company. And these are the types of things if you listen to the entire call that you will see that I uncovered throughout the call. And I was very clearly able to tie value of what our platform does to their longer term initiatives by again, starting with that question about why are they adding headcount in the first place. At the end of the day, I'm in a very, very technical sale. I'm at a very small and fast growing startup that has little to no brand recognition. So having to be this pointed, having to be this specific, I think is very much my use case. But at a minimum, I hope you get value out of it. And I don't doubt if you're in a different industry or maybe you work at a market leader like Amazon or Google Cloud or something like that, you can probably call with a totally different approach because people know who Google Cloud is. People know who AWS is. If you're brand new or getting started in sales, that's the biggest thing that I'd say is if anything, practice, think about what you're gonna say ahead of time. Even if you're driving in your car, practice that opener. Hey, this is Eric Finch with company, how have you been? Literally just practice that. And because when you get into the game time situation, whether it's your interview or the first times you're on the phone, you can fall back on that and do it, especially the more you do it without thinking. You don't sweat the little detail of like trying to get so nervous about every word, like what is the exact word to say? If you're conveying confidence, if you're conveying that you know exactly what you're talking about, at a minimum, people are going to be more inclined to listen, even if you fumble a word or two, even if you're not exactly on the ball. But I hope that helps. Have a great week. See you next time.